What's going on, guys? We are back at it again with another episode of True Capacity Talks. And today we have someone that was in my life before I even started coaching, Quentin Curry. Met him down at uh, at Peachtree City, CrossFit Peachtree City, uh, back in the time where I was very inconsistent in health and wellness. Uh, a heck of a coach, solid, solid guy, and an athlete himself. We're going to dive into a couple of things. Want to just first ask you, man, how you doing today? Man, I'm doing. I'm awesome, man. Blessed. It's it's such a a good opportunity. Thanks for having me on again, man. Uh, I'm 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 living life, loving it. Got to love it to live it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I I love to hear that. Um, I guess, dude, elevator pitch for you is it like everyone's into different modalities, has different methodologies, has different mindset around around things, and and the way that you can do fitness. Choose your own adventure out here. What would you say yours is like an elevator pitch? If someone caught you in an elevator rolling up, you'd say what about what you do? I would say, man, I'm, I'm, I help people with habits. Habits are probably the most important thing when it comes to uh, goals, weight loss, or anything, really. Just, mm-hmm. just building habits to kind of help you get to where you want to be, uh, whether that's, again, weight loss or trying to become a billionaire or business-wise. Like, it's all about those habits that you, you cultivate that kind of help you along the way and, and kind of build your foundation in order to make you successful in whatever it is that you do. Okay. And more specifically with, with HPR, right? Your nutrition company, uh, your coaching company in general, like how, how are you focused on habits there? Is it more psychologically based coaching? Is it like, what are we talking about here? Yeah. So it's a lot of psychology. Like, honestly, uh, one thing that I found like, and, and we can get into my work history a little bit later on, but one thing I found out working with the, in the corporate nutrition world is a lot of these people don't understand what habits are and how to maintain their weight loss. They just eat the food, lose the weight, and six months later they're back because they never understood. So mm-hmm. what I took from that is I decided like, hey man, like let's start teaching people how to actually think about what they're doing, mm-hmm. how to actually build and construct a plate, how to do the habits that are necessary in order for you to goals and everything like that. Like it could be starting off as simple as just one thing. And then pretty much what we what we try to design our program around is basically habits. Like what are you doing already? And let's build on what you're already doing to get mm-hmm. you to where you want to be. Okay. And you cut out there for just a second. Okay. Uh I heard we focus on one thing and then you said a few words and then it it popped out. So hit me back okay. there. All right. So we focus on, we may start off with focusing on one thing mm-hmm. uh, and that can be, and, and then from there, we just build on the habits, um, kind of like stackable habits mm-hmm. uh, that we do in order to kind of help you get to where you want to be. Uh, because again, those habits are the key to everything. If you have the habits, more than likely you're going to perform well. And when you mm-hmm. perform well, you get the results that you want. Okay. And so let's back up a little bit. You uh, yeah. you realized that there was a hole in the market working in corporate nutrition. First of all, yeah. what's corporate nutrition and and why are they missing the boat here? So corporate nutrition, uh, I'll tell you, like I, I used to work for Jenny Craig. Uh, okay. I was a supervisor and a consultant at Jenny Craig mm-hmm. um, before they, they went under. But um, the thing that I noticed, again, with the people are they tend to come back. They mm-hmm. always come back. And in mm-hmm. some sense of the word, that's, that's business. The business needs people to come back and the business needs people to spend their money in order to keep the business running, basically. Uh, so that's the hole that I found in that is that these people should be taught more. They should be taught how to maintain their weight loss. They shouldn't just eat the food and that's it. Um, so that's what I try to focus on more so than anything. Yeah, we hit on the food and everything because the food does matter, but learning and understanding how you feel and learning the habits needed to, in order, in order to get you to where you want to be is very important just as much as the food is. Got it. And yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I, I'm curious outside of having repeat customers, right. And people relapsing on their fat loss or weight loss, would you say that the Jenny Craig method worked? Uh, yeah, I mean, because at that point in time, it's a simple numbers game. Uh, if you if you eat twelve hundred calories, <laughs> more than likely you're gonna lose weight. Uh, if you just do that nonstop for how many ever months and years that those people did it in order to lose weight, like the 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 menu in in itself, 
mindset that people, oh, I can always come back to Jenny Craig whenever I get back to my weight that I was before Jenny Craig. So from that standpoint, like I, I'm, I'm not going to knock it. it the 1,200 mm-hmm. calories or whatever a person ate, it worked. Uh, it's just a matter of teaching people now, okay, now what do you do with that? Once you get there, what do you do now? And from that aspect of it, I think corporate nutrition fails because it's such a reliance on people coming back. Mm. Almost like the plans are set up for you to be connected to them forever. Yes. Similar yeah. to our friends at Ozempic. Wow. You don't say. <laughs> you don't say. You don't say. You don't say. What, Once um, you get it, you got to keep it. Right? You can't get off it if you want sustained results. What What was the... um? Like what modality was the, was the physical intervention, like the lifestyle intervention with Jenny Craig? Was it her like Um, booty blasting body weight stuff or was it strength training? Like, what are we talking here? So one thing that I I will say is they did start towards the end of the company uh, to push a little bit of strength training, but most of our clientele, uh, let's be honest, were were older women who Mm -hmm. didn't really want to strength train, even though they definitely needed to strength train. Um, So they started to push that, but from the beginning, it was just, oh, you know, just walk, do a lot of walking um, and and do this little resistance thing every now and then kind of thing. Um, so that was their main focus. The main focus was obviously the food, but the secondary thing was just, yeah, okay, maybe you can lift some weights, but if you don't, for sure, walk. That's it. Yeah. Don't do anything else, but walk. Okay. So, I mean, giving out giving out some solid basic advice but maybe not as much insistence on resistance training based on the evidence-based science that says that yeah. that is the best thing for, you know, avoided osteoporosis, sarcopenia, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, as people age. Um, I- I'm curious, so how the heck did you get there, man? I knew you when you were a CrossFit coach <laughs> down at CrossFit Peachtree City. I know pandemic happened, Right. Everyone had to go back and take care of their family. Things shuffled up. Businesses closed. Some people closed for just a short time. Like, how did you end up at Jenny Craig doing nutrition out of, you know, the cult of CrossFit? <laughs> so uh, funny enough, like I still coach CrossFit like mm-hmm. while I was doing Jenny Craig, just a little bit here and there. Mm-hmm. But how I ended up there was uh, honestly the pandemic. I mean, um, pandemic happened. Uh, of course, we, we mentioned, uh, you know, me from Peachtree City, that's where I was. And, and because of the pandemic, that didn't end up working out. Uh, mm-hmm. So I ended up having to find something. And I already had my nutritional certification from um, Precision Nutrition. Uh, so them. I was like, you know, Love them. Why, why, don't, uh, why don't I just, okay. mm-hmm. all right, why don't I just uh, do something in nutrition? I mean, it's, and I found something that was close to home. And it, it actually ended up working out pretty well. Mm-hmm. I mean, like they supported my family, you know, as far as like uh, financially, I was supported very well with them. And honestly, I, I touched a lot of people and, and talked to a lot of people uh, that are still friends today. Like, honestly, I, I can call like a few clients up right now and, and just talk to them, and have a little nice little chit chat with them. So uh, I ended up there because, you know, I needed something, but I was I wanted to be particular about what I wa- was going into, and I wanted to do something with nutrition as well. So it kind of lined up and that worked for me. Heck yeah! Uh, I know you're an accounted for man, but did you get to meet Jenny Craig? No, no. <laughs> Jenny Craig is somewhere off in uh, Australia, something. She's about ninety plus years old now. So <laughs> that's funny. Um, so they went totally under, like more recently. Yeah, yeah, like. Um, as of May, as of May, they went, oh my. went bankruptcy. Yeah. Okay. So more so. recently you've, you've been doing your own thing or you're kind of doing your own thing and that split in time or. So I was kind of doing my own thing, splitting mm-hmm. time with it, but uh, truthfully, and it's a blessing and, and I don't mind saying it, but like it's the blessing that it all happened the way it did because it kind of allowed me to put all my energy into what I really, really wanted to be doing, mm-hmm. uh, which is, helping people the way that I want to help them versus the way that somebody else wants me to help them. Uh, because, you know, based on my, the knowledge that I've gained over the years, mm-hmm. like I kind of have a pretty steady hand at, at how to help people with this, with this problem that we have in the United States and all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but I kind of used Jenny Craig as, as a crutch, to be honest with you, because again, the pay was good. 
Yeah. So, well, I mean, Q, it, a crutch or a means to an end because the pandemic knocked everyone on their ass. Like, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily down, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily put yourself below <laughs> because you you took a job when something yeah. didn't work out that that was working prior to pandemic. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, when I was first starting coaching, I was bartending every weekend, every Friday, Saturday, yeah. right? I mean, when I was trying to do the whole marketing thing, when I when I had graduated college, I was still the the general manager at a bar, like still working 70 hours and then trying to do my own thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And in fact, it yeah. probably made you a better coach being where you're at now because you have CrossFit methodology and the nutrition that's atrocious. You have precision nutrition with solid nutrition. You yeah. have experience with Jenny Craig with, you know, an underserved community that is a little bit older, right? And has different, uh, I guess you could say, you know, different needs than, you know, your 25 year old CrossFitter that, that wants to come in and yeah, isn't trying to go to the games, sure. but wants to work out, right? A yeah. different, uh, a different methodology there. So I, Man, I, I don't know that I'd be down on myself. I am curious though. You said it's uh you said something that was very interesting there. It's a blessing in disguise because it allowed you to serve people the way that you would like to serve them. How would yeah. you like to serve them? Break break that down for me. Well, honestly, it's it's again focusing on um uh, the habits because what another thing that I kind of learned from from being a break, it's all about the number. Uh we, we care more about the number on the scale than we do anything else mm -hmm. and how we get to that number. And that's the the what basically allows people to like come back to Jenny Craig because they all they cared about was the number. Uh, so that's kind of why why the the title of my company is HPR because we focus on the habits. Uh, the habits lead to better performance, and the re performance gives you better results. And that's that's strictly it. It's, it's nothing um, too complex about it. It's just build the habits that's going to get you to where you want to be, perform better, and then there you go, boom. Uh, so it basically allows me to talk to people about what's really important versus just one metric of the weight loss journey. Okay. So like non-scale wins or non-scale process goals, yeah. I mean, what, what are you looking at? So like a perfect example is, um, I, I'm not going to say any names or anything like that for the privacy of the clients or whatnot, but uh, I had a client who came in to Jenny Craig and she did everything right for the whole week. Like she worked out, ate all the meals, drank all the water, and she lost two ounces. And I had to talk her off the ledge of quitting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that, that's that's my point. It's like we, we miss all the things that we did right just because that one thing wasn't what we wanted to see. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not the way it should be. We should be more focused on the 99% of the things that we did right throughout the week and that 1%, okay, that's going to come because my performance is getting better. And when my performance gets better, that means my results are going to show. Are there specific process goals that you force apply to everyone that comes in that you focus on to get away from just the scale wins because that didn't really work at Jenny Craig? Yeah. So basically one of the things that, I, that we talk about uh, journaling is a huge thing for us just to kind of understand what you're feeling, how you're feeling. Uh, and basically every week we go through your journal and make sure that, you know, everything is on the up and up. Not necessarily like I read your journey, you just kind of present it to me uh, in a way that you feel comfortable with. Uh, also, uh, just the, the consistency. I celebrate the small wins. Like like I have, a, I'm, I'm on an app now that basically allows me to kind of check in with people uh, in order to see how they're progressing through the week and if they hit all the markers that we needed them to hit as far as like either hydration or the vegetables or prioritizing protein a little bit more than everything else. Uh, so those things kind of allow me to check in and make sure that everybody's on an up and up. And I celebrate that because it shouldn't just be about the scale. You should be about, okay, did you, did you do all your workouts in the week? Heck yeah, let's go. Let's, that's awesome. Let's, let's, how did you do? How did you feel? Let's celebrate this because this is better than you were yesterday. And at the end of the day, we're trying to be 1% better than we were yesterday. That's, that's, that's the goal basically. Mm. Yeah. That, um, that's a, that's an interesting. So James clear, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with atomic yeah. habits, right? I'm sure you're yeah. also familiar with Ben Bergeron of comp train, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, both of them preach that 1% better every day to get not 365% better a year, right? We're talking about compound interest here. 
that's not what that is. Um, but it's very interesting to me to to hear you say that because I think a lot of a lot of programs, dare I say, and I know you used to be a representative of them, I think it's a little predatory. I think it's a little predatory to focus only on one thing, right? Where you know that you're increasing relapses to come back. It's yeah. the same thing that you can see in a lot of places. Why does Herbalife make a shy ton of money? Why? Well, because or Noom or any of these these like very aggressive, you know, yeah. quick weight loss MD, right? Extreme weight loss MD. And any of these people like we're talking about exogenous things put into you to flush you out of everything with an unrealistic expectation that we know you can't sustain forever. Yeah. Sounds like you're putting forth the effort to give people things that they can sustain forever. You say that's fair? Yeah, I'll say that's perfectly fair. I'm actually, um, uh, like a lot of these things have kind of shifted to me uh, the more that I've, I've read more and everything. Mm-hmm. So I have read Atomic Habits by James Clear, great book. Uh, I'm in the process of reading uh, Outlive by Dr. Peter, Peter uh, Tia, uh, which is also a fantastic book. But my focus more so now is how can I get you to be better than you ever were at 100. How about that? Like, what's what's wrong with that? When you're 100 years old, you should still be flying around, going to Vegas and partying it up, like like you're 70 mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's kind of my goal, man. It's like, like more so for longevity and to help people like live a better, healthier life. Because I have parents, man, and, and I have grandparents who have struggled with a lot of different things and a lot of ailments that were probably unnecessary. Uh, but now... I have the opportunity to help them out and that's what I do. And I, I help any and everybody that I can out because life is such a precious thing and we should really enjoy it for the in, whole entirety of it and not be in, in pain and struggling um, all the time, basically. Yeah. So. Yeah. Is there, is there one demographic that you work with most or you've seen most success with? Uh, I would probably say, um, Probably women in their probably like late thirties to mid fifties mm-hmm. is what I've seen. What I work with the most, um, and they they tend to work out pretty well. I mean, as far as like, cause they actually listen, <laughs> uh, which is which is a, a a weird thing to say, but like being a person who works with clients and everything, they actually listen, which is awesome. Uh, so. When, whenever you have somebody who's listening to you and taking the things that you say, you, you do the necessary resources, uh, research and, and have the necessary resources in order to kind of help them see this whole thing through. And at the end of the day, like uh, like I said, longevity is everything. Longevity is key to me. And like diet, exercise, or not even diet, but nutrition and exercise uh, and mindset are all important in that, that, that spectrum of your life. So we try to hit on it. Yeah, there's 30 to 50. My clients that sit in that that age range, it's normally fat loss. It's um, you know muscle building because most people <laughs> most people of that age yeah. grew up in an age where they were told that if you lift a heavy weight, you're going to be jacked like Arnold. And so if you touch weights, you're going to be a man, right? Like that's a massive myth that does yeah. not make any sense, but it is something that's repeated, repeated, repeated. Uh, is that something that you see? the same with that demographic do you run in the same kind of struggles yeah i mean some some of my clients who are in that age range um i do have to kind of talk to them about hey you know you're not going to be big like in order to be big you have to eat big and you're not eating big so you're not going to be that uh but i would say probably like three to four of them actually already strength train and run and do all the things they need to do. They just need a little bit of tweaking here and there with their nutrition and mindset, which is what we work on with them. Uh, so I would say it's a mixed bag. Uh, I wish it was more where I could, I don't have to stress about, are you lifting weights? Mm-hmm. Okay. But you know, um, but you know, every, everybody's is, is coming to me in a different point in their lifetime and, and I'm just trying to help them the best I can and recommend the best things for them, essentially. Yeah. Are you in, um, so the way that you're serving clients, is it more remote, in person, hybrid? Are you on Zoom? Is it group coaching, one on one? Like, walk me through that. Like, what does that look like to work yeah. with you? Yeah. So basically, for the most part, it's either via Zoom or one on one. 
uh, if you live too far away, I can't, you know, I can't, I have, <laughs> can't drive a thousand miles a day to kind of to see about you. But I do Zoom presentations as well. I, I work with a lot, a few of my clients one on one basis. Um, it's like I really prefer the one on one thing, um, unless it's a whole family. I haven't gotten into the family dynamic yet, but uh, I would love to as far as like working with husband, wife, kids, and everything. Uh, but for the most part, it is one on one basis. Uh, that's where you get the best results. Honestly, you can't. I mean, this is that's it's like a, a a guarantee thing. You can't. You can only like working with a person one on one. You get all the attention, all their focus, and that's the best way to go. Have you seen Have you seen better results with people one on one focus in person or remote when you have the nutrition, the fitness, and the mindset? Truthfully, I'll say one on one, uh, like in person kind of thing. Definitely better. Uh, even though really? I do have, you think yeah. in person is better? Really? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, bro, it's, I disagree it's, completely. <laughs> I think that that's hilarious. I would love to know why you think that, right? Because that's completely, completely opposite of uh, of my experience. But so walk me through that. That's that's fascinating. Yeah. So basically, with the one on one, honestly, I can look at a person and tell mm -hmm. like their body language. I can I can see the subtle shifts when they talk. I can. I can like hear the the different tonations in their voice uh, more so than when I'm on Zoom or so, Zoom or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, and I, it's just it just honestly works out a little bit better for me, honestly. And, and I, I wish I had more people one on one on one basis in person, but um, you know, I do my do the best I can with the Zoom people too as well. So I don't want them to hear this and like, oh, he doesn't do no. I I do I do I try my best to give everybody the same energy and the same focus and the same attention and the same results that they're looking for essentially so but yeah man in person just seems to work better for me i don't know why it's just yeah it's it might be that it might be that crossfit background dude it might be that those years of coaching crossfit because that's more hands-on you're not doing that remote yeah. even yeah. though a lot of people try to do it in the pandemic trying to do wads on on zoom hard pass for me uh yeah. it is interesting though that you say that because i too believe that one-on-one -on -one is is better or very small group like one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one I actually see better results though in fat loss and muscle gain remote. And I think that that's because a lot of people that I've had and my in-person people right now, they're crushing. Okay. But previous people in the past, I've had them in person. So they over optimize for the in-person sessions and then they just don't do anything when they're not with me. Whereas yeah. like my remote people are never with me in person. So it's been different where they're like, okay, I got to hit my three workouts. You know, my three or, three or four workers, I got to hit my steps. I got to hit my nutrition. I've got my check-in calls with James. I have access to speak to him throughout the week. So it's almost like all of the other things are brought to the same level of importance as the fitness when they're not meeting with me in person. Where like my yeah. people in, per in person, they're just like, oh, the fitness is most important because that's when I see you. Everything else like, ah, I'll figure it out. I can see that. I mean, I, and I can definitely see that from that standpoint. It's like... uh it's almost like you, you you try to to hedge your bets a little bit. So it's like, oh, I know I'm going to see him today. So I, I need to do do really good. And then when I leave, it's like, ah, well, whatever. He's not here. <laughs> I've got a few days before I see him again. So like I can slack off. Like, he won't notice. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. You, okay. You, yeah. <laughs> we <Yeah>. notice. <laughs> right. So when you're talking about mindset, uh, that's a word. I mean, that's a term that's thrown around all over the place. What yeah. specifically are you talking about? Are you helping people with? Is there, are you using NLP? Are we talking about um, CBT? Are we talking about like, what, what kind of methodology are you applying that you found to work best? Because it seems like you've worked with like a variety of clients from many different backgrounds. Like, yeah. what are you doing that works there? Well, honestly, it's it's just being upfront and honest with them. Uh, like we, we go over goal, whatever, whatever your goal is, goal setting sessions kind of thing, just to kind of see where we are. And I, I will be honest, like, hey, if a person wants to lose 100 pounds in two months, I'm not that guy. I can't do it for you. Like, and mm -hmm. you shouldn't realistically expect that. Uh, not saying that anybody's ever done that, just using an extreme example, basically. But it's just, like, honestly, instilling confidence. Like, I, I try to instill as much confidence in them. Um, like, you can do it. Like, that, that is one of my favorite sayings is you literally can do anything you want to. You just got to want to do it. And that's why you're here because you want to do it. So let's do it. Um, and then from that, outside of that, it's just, uh, again, a positive uh, affirmation, basically just reinforcing the the will that they can actually do it. You can do it. You can, you can achieve everything that you want. And I'm here to help you with that. 
So it's just being like a quote unquote psychologist, just being on their side, uh, having a person that they can lean their, their head on uh, when they need to kind of thing and then get all the knowledge and, and information they need in order to help them pursue whatever they would like. So it's just positive re affirmations, basically, and, and reinforcing the positivity that they can actually do what they want to do. Okay. Where, where do you think with the affirmations, with the reinforcement, with you, you being intentional about hyping them up and motivating them, inspiring them to be better, where do you think that most of, of people gen pop, right? We're not talking about athletes, professionals, et cetera, yeah. just gen pop, maybe either in that 30 to 50 or outside of that, where do you think they struggle most and need more reinforcement? Like what part of the journey? Uh, honestly, um, so, I mean, the way that I break down the nutrition is is not necessarily that hard um, because, you know, I use a lot of things that I learned from um, precision nutrition. But the one thing that I find is there's a lot of self-doubt, a lot of self-doubt. People self-sabotage themselves all the time when it comes to this field because it's almost like they they don't want to succeed, but they want to succeed. Uh, so it's, it's driving home the fact that you are going to succeed at this and you are going to do what you want to do and I'm not going to let you go back. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's having that passion and, and the passion that I have for them is, is trying to basically, basically, uh, so to speak, instilling them something in themselves too, um, that they can do it. And there's nothing that's going to stop them outside of themselves and themselves is not going to stop them because I'm not going to allow it. Okay. And, and these people that are coming to you that need some more affirmation that need some more positive reinforcement, are they usually coming for, I mean, obviously longevity, but is in their mind, do they have a size? Do they have a weight? Do they have a body type that they're looking for? Yeah. So most of the time they do have a weight in mind and a size in mind. Um, but I, you know, one of the things that I try to talk to people about is not necessarily focusing on that. Let's focus on the thousand other things again that we can uh, get out of this whole journey that we're going to go on. Um, and basically, yeah, it's just, it's just it, it it is a, a a hard thing to sell to people. I'm not going to lie to you; it is really hard to tell a person like, "Hey, scale doesn't matter," and they actually believe it. Uh, so these are the things that you know I kind of work at and kind of work on in order to kind of help them understand the message behind that there's a, a message behind the madness that I'm talking about basically. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's a focus on the non-scale. It's a focus yeah. on the things that they can actually control and then yeah. kind of using the scale as a progress metric, but not as a, Hey, we're going to focus on moving this. This is going to happen because of these other things. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I honestly have people and, and I can't, hold everybody accountable as far as this, but I typically want people to wait once a month. That's I mean, it, dude? If you, once yeah, a month? Just once a month. Yeah, Jeez. because if, if you are performing in the gym mm -hmm. like you're supposed to and you're mm -hmm. doing the habits that you have, the nutrition that you have, and you're performing well, at the end of the month, you're going to be like, oh, wow. Wow. Okay. And it kind of it kind of gets that those juices flowing again because a lot of people – will definitely definitely let that scale dictate who they are and what they are and how what, how successful they'll be and that's just that's just can't be the case in, in my opinion because like the scale doesn't mean anything like it, it means something to a lot of people and I, I i get that but at the end of the day if you're feeling better your energy levels are up you're sleeping better you yeah you want to have sex more with your spouse. Can I say that? I, I guess I can. I <laughs> Bro, you can say whatever you want. Any okay, cuss words, cool. any vulgarity. There's cool. there's no sponsor on this that's going to come cancel us. Don't you worry. Gotcha. gotcha. I'm the sponsor. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I mean, those things, because those things are important. Like, because when you don't feel good about yourself, you don't want to have sex. When you don't feel good about yourself, your energy level goes down and you feel sad and depressed and, and down and out. So, let's focus on you feeling better let's focus on you doing more and being capable of doing more and let the results follow to basically got it yeah i uh i think that the the goal here for most people is to look better naked and have endurance when it counts like legitimately yes. endurance when it counts mentally endurance when it counts with your kids 
Okay. Not everything is in the gutter and then endurance when it counts in other areas, <laughs> right? Like yeah. there's yeah. situations in life, and also in saving your family from danger, right? There's certain situations where you need things that you're too shit out of luck. If you haven't prioritized it in the moment that you need it, there's just yeah. no way around it. You can't just like inject yourself with norepinephrine and think that you're going to perform. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> what dude, you, you can't, it's too late, bro. It's too late. I don't know what to tell yeah. you. So, yeah, no, that that's interesting. Um, very fascinating that you only have people weigh in once a month. That is wild, Q. I mean, I'm glad it works it's, for you. That's wild, bro. It's, it's hard to sell. I, I, I'm, I'll, I'll be, and, and again, it's, it's one of those things where maybe some of them may sneak in there, but I prefer just once a month. Let's focus on what's really like the 99 percent of the other things that's going on. And when your clothes start fitting better, you'll definitely know that you're losing weight. Hmm. Do you ever have people tell you like, I can't do that. I have to know what I weigh. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm realistic with it. I mean, I, I'm not going to say, no, you can't do that. I'm not a dictator or anything like that. I'm kind of um, not a salty, but you know, if, if you really want to, and it's that important to you, I'm not going to stray away from what you really want and desire because this is your journey. I'm just along with it basically. Uh, but for the most part, if, if the person trusts me with some of my clients, like uh, some of my older clients who've been working with me for a little bit longer, um, they definitely uh, trust and know the process and know how things work. The new people that I, that I get in, it's like, yeah, I want to see where I am, which is understandable. Uh, but I, I strongly encourage to them to like, hey, let's just try and see it. Let's try and see at least if you can go a month without it. And if you can't, that's completely fine. Um, you're going to see your results anyway, because... It's, it's all habit based and, and performance. If you're performing better in the gym, you're going to see it. Uh, if you're getting stronger, you may go up and wait a little bit. If you're feeling a little bit hungry kind of thing, uh, because the muscle is just is growing there for you. But uh, for the most part, if you're performing better in the gym, your weight will reflect. Yeah. And, and what, I mean, on that note, specifically on the performance in the gym, are you measuring that based on like, three RMs or an RP eight set of back squats. Are you, is that focused on like testing? Is there any specific metrics you have there? Is it kind of like, Hey, if we're hitting progressive overload, if our numbers are increasing, if we're staying healthy, then we're on track. Yeah. So I, I, I do definitely do like subscribe to the, the progressive overload. Mm -hmm. Um, and if that's, that's, if the numbers are going up in that, mm -hmm. like we're, we're, we're doing good. Uh, I also rely on, like, like I said, the journal aspect of it, how you feeling like when you're working out, like, do you feel like you have more energy? If you do, that's great. We're in, we're moving in the right direction. So, uh, I guess you can kind of use it at, say it's an RPE kind of, um, range, uh, range or whatnot, but mm -hmm. for the most part, uh, we do progressively overload and we also rely on the, how they're actually feeling too. And, and how have you adapted the from, I mean, from coming from a CrossFit background where you have, you know, 4,200 movements and nine modalities crammed into a 60 minute session with a warm up and cool down. How have you changed the way that you program to make it for gen pop where it's not over complex, where we're going to spend 18 weeks trying to get a snatch? Gotcha. Yeah. So that's a great question. Honestly, um, as much as I love CrossFit and I, I still do CrossFit, um, like, you're wearing a CrossFit shirt almost, right now. Yeah. You know, there you go. <laughs> but, um, I don't necessarily like talk to people about lippy lifting. Mm -hmm. Uh, like we do, Smart. we mainly do, we'll do squats, deadlifts, especially if it's on the remote setting and they're a little bit older, like there, there's no need for, a. a 60 year old woman to be clean and jerking in my opinion or snatching because uh, if i'm not there to, to to coach you nine times out of ten you probably will be, will be doing it wrong and you're gonna hurt yourself mm -hmm. so we mainly focus on squats mm -hmm. uh we mainly focus on deadlifts we try to incorporate a little bit of pulling as far as like barbell rows or uh, pull-ups or something like that if you can do it we still try to train that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um and we also really, really hit on a little bit of a cardio as far as like really running mm -hmm. and trying to get your um, VO2 max to to be better than somebody else's basically in your same age range. So those are the things that we really focus on. I don't want to be too complex because, again, uh, when you're dealing with older people, you don't want to be too complex. Uh, and I say older because they're older than me. But, okay. um, so and, yeah, good, but good qualifier. 
Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, if there's somebody that's younger who is more CrossFit uh, or bodybuilding or mm -hmm. anything like that, or, or professional, like one to try to be professional runner or something like that, uh, I definitely will ramp up the things that they do as far as mm -hmm. like that goes in their training uh, and their uh, nutrition from that standpoint too. Uh, mm -hmm. but for the most part, for the general people, general gym pop, as you say, uh, it's simple, basic, let's, let's do this, this work on your balance too, because balance is very critical as you get older. Uh, mm -hmm. most people fall because they, they just don't work on the balance. So we work on a lot of that kind of stuff as well, just to kind of make sure that they can live a long life by themselves. Got it. Okay. So if I'm hearing you correctly, most of gen pop, they're getting compound, bilateral movements plus balance work some yeah. conditioning but yes. only to the level that their joints can handle and then nutrition yeah. that is simple yes okay sounds like it's no nonsense <laughs> i mean i hate to use the, the term no bull but it's, it's you know it's still the company name from the company but it, it's really noble like, i got i don't i don't want it to be over complicated i'm not just telling you to stand on your head and and do jumping jacks or anything like that that's yeah that's, that's gonna cause you to get hurt it's just keeping it simple the simple things worked for millennia so why should we switch it up yeah something um something that a company always preaches a company called gym launch preaches all the time it's similar to i know you're you're a two brain coach aren't you aren't you certified in yeah. two brain yeah yeah so yeah. gym launch you know another consulting company that works with gyms um they always say their founder alex hormozzi as i'm sure you probably know of at this point um simple scales fancy fails the more overcomplicated this crap is the worse somebody's going to do, yeah. especially yeah. if they're not already specialists themselves. I mean, if you gave me a double progression, five day a week split with compound, unilateral and bilateral movements, I'd be good. But also, this is what I do all day. So you yeah. can give me complexity and I can read RIR, RPE, couplets, interval weight training, et cetera, because I've been exposed to it. But ain't no ain't no way I'm giving Sally or Jenny you know. or Michaela. Right. That with no understanding of where you and I are at at all. Yeah. That's yeah. a great way for someone to get injured. And I agree wholeheartedly with you saying that about Olympic weightlifting. I think that unless you're under the guidance of an Olympic weightlifting coach or a CrossFit coach that knows what the hell they're doing, there's really no reason for you to be doing that unless you're an athlete yourself. Like that's, you know, <laughs> outside of obvious exceptions here. Right. Those people, you don't have any business snatching from the ground. You don't have any business jerking yeah. either. Yeah. At all. Yeah, I mean, jerk press, it, it I'm here for it. Anything. Push press, yeah, we're on the verge. Yeah. Jerking, yeah. I'm good. Nah, Snatching, I'm good. Dumbbell, yeah. that's it. From the hang, not the ground, that's it. Yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, man. It's like at the end of the day, we, we're in this to help people, not hurt them. So if you if you're programming all these complexity complex things, and your your clients end up getting hurt, then you're doing them more of a disservice than you are a, a favor. So at the end of the day, I'm here to help, not mm -hmm. to hurt. Yeah. So try to try to do no harm out here. Um, on the yes. balance thing, how like what percentage? What is a prevalence percentage wise? Do you think of the clients that are coming in with you that have balance issues, like out of a hundred? Uh so I would say um, probably about twenty to thirty percent of them. Uh, because some of my clients, they still do run a little bit. So mm -hmm. there's some inherent balance that that's mm -hmm. done by running basically. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the, the, the older, cause I have a uh, almost 60 year old client now. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we work on balance a lot uh, because she's getting up there to the point where you know, like, I don't, I don't want her to hurt herself basically. Mm -hmm. So if if you work on the balance and the stability of all the things that you got going on, the simple movements that you have, it makes everything that much easier and makes you that much st stable, basically, to not hurt yourself and get the work done. So we, I, I, I will program balance a lot. Like in the warm up, for the most part, yeah, you're you're gonna do some balance things. Um, on the off days. I would like you to do some balance things because it's just that important. Like we yeah. take it for granted because we've been walking upright for all our lives. Like we take it for granted, like that at one point in time we're we're gonna we're gonna become babies again and can't stand up. So
So let's work on it so that we can basically prolong that pathway. Yeah. You go from zero balance to the best balance that you'll probably ever have to then worse balance over time. As you get closer yeah. to life force on both sides, you have no balance. Typically, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. people. And and yeah. I think I think that I can agree there. Uh, a lot of 30 year olds that haven't had tons of injuries, ACL tears, MCL, PCL, um, meniscus or ankle breaks all over the place have decent balance. But when people get to mid 30s to 40s to 45s to 50s, a lot of people that don't walk backwards at all. Right. And don't do anything but sit in the 90 degree angle in their chair. We have a problem, Houston. We have a problem. Yeah. There's only so much that you can do if you're not loading it, not even with body weight. Like if you're not even going, and I don't know what your thoughts on are, are on uh, knees over toes guy. Um, but the ATG, same. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't, we're going to have a longer conversation here on air in front of everyone. <laughs> because to me, that is something that just demystifies the knees over toes, right? That one study that's been quoted and misused to scare the crap out of everyone yeah. for years and years and years and years, similar to how a study is done with that for keto and carnivore yeah. and vegan, et cetera, et cetera, you know, cherry picking data out here. But regardless, I think that like the knees over toes, the, the KOT split squats, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful exercise for everyone. And you can scale it all the way to your foot on a bench. Walking backwards. Knee health is, in my opinion, one of the biggest, the biggest problems that we have with people when we're talking about biomechanics, most people have shitty knees as we're getting older because we don't do anything for them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, I honestly would say that before the knees over toes guys came into like the picture and everything, I didn't think much about it. It's like, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm hitting deadlifts. I should be right. I'm, I'm hitting the hamstrings, right? Uh, but even now, like I'm, I'm, I'm walking around in a, a pair of Vivos. I don't, I, I, I go barefoot shoes all, all, all day mm -hmm. long. Uh, I walk backwards at least two to three times a day, honestly, just random times. And I don't care who sees me, like he could probably, should probably join me in order to, yeah. to kind of get the benefit of it. So like, and definitely, 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 I will um, program that kind of stuff too. And mm -hmm. the training sets with everybody, as far as like balance, um, walking backwards is a part of that too. Uh, because again, like knee health is such a thing that shouldn't be a thing mm -hmm. because we should take care of, not only the quads, but the hamstrings and the calves and the shins. We should take care of all that stuff because it all encompasses into our knees. So why not take care of all of it in order to prevent knee issues? Yeah. Well, on, I mean, posteriorly, most of us are screwed up anyways, right? We do all this pushing. We don't do any pulling. We do, we do all this squatting. We don't do any lunging. We don't do any thrust. We don't do like, I mean, we have... So many people walking around with quads the size of, of the universe and then a flat butt and no hamstrings, <laughs> zero, nothing, no calves, just a board on the back, no back, no triangle, right? Just straight up. Hey man, I'm all chest. I'm all chest and I'm slouched, right? Yeah. I'm all quads, no butt. And at one point I didn't have any hamstrings either. So like I'm speaking to myself here, you know, all quads, front squats, love them. Back squats, hate them. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm the opposite, man. I love some bad squads, man. Yeah, love not them. a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> Still not a fan. We'll do it because it's good for me. Similar to other things, uh, but don't like it. Um, but I want to. I want to kind of take us. I want to respect your time first and foremost. I have a few things that I, I'd like to. I'd like for us to cover, and then we might have to just do this again at some point, my man. But first and foremost, I I'm curious your thoughts. This is a question I ask everyone that comes on here. What do you think is the biggest problem with our health and wellness industry today? Oh, the biggest problem, uh, complexity. Like it's, it's too mm -hmm. many, you, you know, you'll go on social media and you'll see somebody again doing jumper jacks on their head or like, and CrossFit, like, honestly, I love it. But the athletes who promote themselves, they don't necessarily do it any justice either because all you see is, like, oh, people walking on their hands or they're snatching 285 pounds uh, for, for a double, <laughs> uh, touch and go. Uh, basically, you know, that kind of stuff really sends a confusing and conflicting message to the mass majority because it's not about all that stuff. It's about the simple things. Can you sit down and stand up? Can you do that with a little bit of weight on your back? Can you run from this point to this point? 
Uh, can you also walk backwards? Can you stand on one foot with your eyes closed for 15 seconds? Can you do those things? It's so simple and we make it so complicated because we we have to get the likes and everything. And I, I get it, it's a business, but it, it can be a little bit too complex at times. And that's that's probably the biggest thing that I see from a lot of people. Beautiful, okay. So that's the biggest problem that we have facing us. Um, probably for just mass adoption now for like everyone to have an equal opportunity to actually better their health. We got to demystify it. We got to take the, yeah. take the complexity out of it. And Kristen Guzman and C bomb and all these other people run around on social media talking about five tips to this and six tips to that and three exercise for this and get abs by doing crunches. Mother. <laughs> if another person says that you get abs by doing crunches, a visible six pack doesn't come from you doing exercise. My guy, nope. I don't know. It's in the kitchen. And and the the funniest thing, in my opinion, and the most ironic thing is that these people know this. They're intentionally, they, they're not stupid, right? I'm not going to sit here and say Guzman or any of these other cats or Bradley Martin is stupid. They know what they're doing. Look at their body. They know at least what they're doing for themselves. Even if they're taking yeah. exogenous, they know what they're doing enough to know that they're lying. To know they're straight lying. And nobody yeah. cares because nobody's going to call them out because even the biggest people in the industry are doing it too. And I've got no yeah. beef with Bradley or any of the rest of them. I think a lot of their content is hilarious. I think a lot of it is super cool. Raw Talk's a great podcast. I love Lane Norton. I think Trevor Cashy's dope. I think there's a lot of great people out there, right, that I listen to a decent bit. But some people got to stop overcomplicating things for the sake of them getting paid for their ebook. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a business. And you're hearing my voice immediately after what I just said because it's, it looks like Q's phone died. So he got booted off the, the Zoom, unfortunately. So I guess that will be the conclusion of this first episode with him. And we'll just have to get together and do it again. Much love, peace, and blessings. Hope that everyone listening to this, watching this on YouTube, has enjoyed it. And um, comes back next time. That'll be easy. Peace.